I'm going to unpack Luke chapter 24. I know that we are a little bit behind, um, but we will catch up this week. I've been uploading these videos to YouTube, and that seems to be working pretty good. Let's get chapter 24 um, taken care of. It is uh, Good Friday in our text. And first of all, we get Jesus before Pilate. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. There is a shift here from the religious to the political, where we left off in chapter 22. Governor of Rome, Pilate is. We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, saying that he himself is the Messiah. The religious leaders say this in front of Pilate. And so Pilate asks him, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus remains silent. What's Pilate's main focus? We talked a little bit the other day about the Pax Romana, the peace of Rome. The religious leaders are trying to get Pilate to understand that Jesus has stirred up the people and he, he's causing chaos. But Pilate finds him not guilty, and he sends him on to King Herod. And then we get Jesus before Herod. This is the same guy who killed John the Baptist. It says, when Pilate heard this, he asked if the man was a Galilean, and he sent him to Herod. He sends him on to Herod. Herod had been wanting to meet Jesus. He wanted him to perform a sign. Magic tricks. Herod's a little kooky for Cocoa Puffs anyway, as we have seen in the scripture accounts. But Herod was excited to meet Jesus. Perhaps he would perform a sign for him. The chief priests and scribes stood by and they accused him, as did Herod and Herod's soldiers. Everybody is mocking uh, Jesus. They put this robe on him, and they sent him back to Pilate. There's this ping-pong match going on uh, between church and state. Uh, somebody's got to do away with Jesus. Jesus, again, remains silent throughout it all. Finally, Jesus is sentenced to death. There's no charges from Herod or, or Pilate, but... Either of these men would have him flogged and released. That's what they said. We hear about Barabbas now with no introduction. Luke doesn't give us any of the details about Barabbas like uh, some of the other Gospels do. I can't remember which one. But we hear about Barabbas with no introduction. And they say, release Barabbas. And we find out Barabbas is a not-so-nice guy. He's a, a murderer, in fact. So Pilate wanted to release Jesus, but the crowd just kept on saying, crucify him, crucify him. So Pilate gave his verdict that their, at their demand, at their demand, should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the murderer, and handed Jesus over as they wished. How does that make you feel? And we're not even to the cross yet. The crucifixion of our Jesus. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene. Now Simon's just kind of along for the ride. He's minding his own business, and all of a sudden the guards seize him and say, Hey, you help Jesus carry his cross here. This take up your cross has been a central theme in the Gospel of Luke. We, we've seen that. If you want to be my followers, then you need to take up your cross. Well, Simon is taking up the cross, literally here. He's helping Jesus carry his cross. And then we see some women that are, are weeping. Jesus ties all of this together with the fall of Jerusalem as well as the rejection of him. When they get to the place of the skull, called Golgotha. We see that he's now on the cross. 
he, he's already on the cross. We don't get the, the beforehand stuff um, here in Luke. But Luke is my favorite portrayal of the crucifixion, mainly because we get the conversation between Jesus and the two thieves, the two criminals, um, only in Luke, only in Luke, okay? So the two criminals are crucified with Jesus, one on his right and one on his left. We hear Jesus say, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. They are casting lots for his clothes, and the leaders are, are scoffing. He saved others, him, they said. Let him save himself, if he is the Messiah, the Son of God, his chosen one. Then we get the conversation between the thieves. One of the thieves says, are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other thief says, we are getting what we deserve, but this man has done nothing wrong. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus says to the thief that believes, claims that he is the son of God. He says to him, today you will be with me in paradise. Now, as pastor, I have had some conversations with people, especially after they've lost a, a loved one and uh, buried, that buried, buried their loved one. And they want to know, is my, my mom or my dad or my grandma or my grandpa or whomever, are they just laying there in, in the ground or, or what? Well, I believe that you go straight into the presence of Christ when you die. Um, I, I've seen evidence of that, too, as I've sat by bedsides and people that ha have died. Um, but this is a scripture that I always point back to. Today you will be with me in paradise. Not at the end times, not when Jesus comes back again. Um, not next week, not after so many whatevers. Today. Today. So you can check it out. Then we have the death of Jesus. It's noon, and it got dark until three. Luke gives us a timeline. There's darkness. The darkness is evidence of a diabolic work. Diabolic just means um, Satan. Um, darkness. And all of a sudden, the temple curtain is torn, which means it opens a way for both Gentile and Jew this is for everybody. Jesus is for everybody. It's interesting, and I, I have missed this, I guess. Um, there is no, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me here in, in Luke? Instead, we get, Father, into your hands, I commend my spirit. Instead, we get the sovereign God. We get the sovereign God. Father, into your hands, I, I surrender. I surrender. And then there's mourning, even by some Jewish bystanders. These are not the disciples. These are just um, townsfolk. So evidence that not everybody was against Jesus. These are Jewish mourners. Then we get the burial. Joseph of Arimathea. He's one of my favorite Bible dudes, and I'm going to look him and Nicodemus up someday when I get to heaven. Uh, we don't see Nicodemus here. Uh, Nicodemus is in John, in John chapter 3. You know, he's a Pharisee that had that nighttime conversation with Jesus. And then again, he, he helps uh, Joseph of Arimathea bury Jesus, but not here in Luke. It says, Joseph of Arimathea, a member of the council. He was a member of the council, religious council, but he did not agree with all of this. And so he went to Pilate and he asked Jesus for Jesus's body. Now, the day of preparation was at hand, meaning the Sabbath was coming quickly. Sundown on Friday was the Sabbath. No worky, no worky. You just went home. And so the ladies prepared the spices for anointing of Jesus's body, but uh, the Sabbath came too quickly, and they didn't get it done. And so that's why they were on the way to the tomb early resurrection morning. And they all went home. And then heaven started counting to three. Three days. 
That's a quote by Bob Jeff. It's not mine, but I love that. Don't you? Heaven started counting to three. Good Friday is always heavy. Um, Holy Saturday seems really heavy to me too. You know, this waiting space. You know, and perhaps your heart might be in this waiting space space for whatever it is and you you need a little resurrection so hold fast friends because he is risen we know that we know that he is born tonight i'm filming this on christmas eve this will be my last one tonight because i really need to go he was born on, on on christmas morn we celebrate it on christmas eve and he is resurrected, and he ascends, and he sits at the right hand of the Father, and he is loving on you from heaven's courts. So just believe. I'll get this posted. I'm going to go back and uh, film the rest of our Luke that I missed as uh, I was with a very dear family of our congregation as Betty was transitioning to heaven's courts. And so I got a little bit behind, as well as trying to figure out these these videos to get uploaded. And so uh, they're in YouTube somewhere. So, all right, sleep well. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.